get your blood flowing, nothing will. So let's let the blood flow one more time, shall we? The 88th renewal of the Tide and the Tigers. Brian Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama is the site. And the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings you a battle of ranked teams as it always seems to be. The matchup in from Baton Rouge, the Tigers of LSU, ranked number 14 against the eighth ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Always a classic in one of the great rivalries in college football. As you take a look at the standings in the SEC West, Alabama alone on top. LSU just one game back and hoping to draw even. And there's Ole Miss after a thrilling win today, also at 5-1. and one. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. My partners are Gary Danielson and Jenny Dell. And, you know, you saw those great moments, partner. The great players, great coaches, national championships. And we get to do it again. I'm, I'm ready. Think about this. In the 16 matchups since Nick Saban has returned to college football, this game has reproduced eight national championships. Six for Alabama, two for LSU. The game's so good, the loser of this game one time was the national championship. I expect the same thing today. Well, it seems like the West always goes through either Baton Rouge or Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. That's where we are tonight. When we talked to Nick Saban yesterday, we talked to him about Jaden Daniels, and he just looked at us and said, if there's a better quarterback in the country, I haven't seen him yet. I think he's right. A year ago, Jaden Daniels solidified his history at LSU. You do that by beating Alabama. They were big underdogs at home, and Jaden Daniels led the comeback late in the game in overtime, and then Brian Kelly goes for two, and they steal the game from Alabama. They go to the SEC championship. Alabama giving up 16 and a half points a game. It might not be those great Alabama teams that barely give up any points, but they're getting better, and they've got guys at every level. They do. Their defense seems a little bit more like a Nick Saban defense the way they play. The team has that complimentary look at every level. They've got the defensive line in there were used to stuffing that run and rushing the quarterback defensive ends edge rushers Dallas Turner as good as anybody in the country and of course Nick Saban has those corners man to man all game they'll have their hands full but this is a good Alabama defense the Alabama offense hasn't been what it's been over the years they're only about 30 points a game right now but we've seen Jalen Milrow in the last month and a half get better and better this is what's different about this game usually all four units are elite the matchup between Alabama's offense that is getting better, as Brad said, is still in progress. Jaden Milrow is getting better, no doubt about that. Can they take advantage of an LSU defense that is not their normal defense? That guy is their best player. What impact can he make? The tie rolls in at home. from Baton Rouge. Here come the Tigers. Jenny Dell, third member of our team on the field. Jenny. Well, for years, the storyline of this matchup has been about Nick Saban and his connection to both programs. But now, the tide has turned, and there's a strong connection felt on both sidelines. We're talking about LSU head coach Brian Kelly and Bama offensive coordinator Tommy Reese. Now, Reese was a quarterback under Kelly at Notre Dame before eventually joining his staff as a QB coach and then an OC. Kelly tried to bring him to LSU, but Reese stayed in South Bend for another year before heading to Alabama. Now, Coach Kelly, he knows how competitive Reese is and that he's molding this Alabama offense to fit their personnel. And Reese told us he's trying to take the emotions out of this game since, guys, this is the first time that they are on opposing sidelines. The 88th renewal, Alabama leads it 
55 wins for the Tide. And Gary talked about last year the overtime in Baton Rouge and the two point conversion to Mason Taylor that sealed that one for the Tigers. You can just get that feel when these two teams get together and you see the crimson jerseys on one side and the white on the other. You brought up a great point. That's always the way it's it is. It's always the way it is. Yep. Their home team LSU likes to wear white. LSU is going to defer. Good luck, gentlemen. And we talked about all those championships. We haven't even get into all the players that have come through here in this game. Absolutely. Over a hundred of future NFL great players played in this football game. Sixteenth time they've gotten together as ranked teams since 2007. That says it all. The light show going on at Brian Denny Stadium. A packed house of over 100,000. And it's a perfect night for football. 63 degrees, clear skies. The triple header of our games today on CBS. What a day of football. And let's cap it off in Tuscaloosa. 55, 27, and 5 through 87 meetings. They've split the last four. And at one point or another, if you're going to win the West, you either got to go through Baton Rouge or you got to come through Tuscaloosa for the most part. Nick Saban, 17th year here, a national championship at LSU, as Jenny said, and then six more in Tuscaloosa. Brian Kelly only in his second year as a head man of the Tigers, but did a fabulous job last year after moving over from Notre Dame to get them the West title and a shot in Atlanta. Both these teams hope to have a shot in Atlanta. Divert to kick, and here we go. Kendrick Law will watch this one go over his head. And they'll bring it out to the 25. And with that, our lineups brought to you by Papa John's. And it all starts with Jalen Milrow. Third season at Alabama. His ninth start out of Katy, Texas. And he has really grown leadership-wise and talent-wise at the all-important quarterback position for Alabama. His teammates love him. I think the fans of this Alabama program love the way he competes. And no doubt, LSU will see the best form of Jalen Milrow that has played all year. Jace McClellan in the backfield with him, along with Kendrick Law. Jace McClellan. And he got about three as we take a look at the rest of the Alabama offense. Looks like this. Speaking of number two, we'll highlight him. Coming off a season high, 115 yards a couple of weeks ago. And it went over Tennessee. Alabama. Eighth in the conference in rushing, which is a little off their norm as well. Second down at seven. No row, straight drop. Jalen's going deep down the near sideline for Burton, and he threw it over his head incomplete. Yeah, keeping that ball on the field to play, give Burton a chance to go up and get it. He loves to do that. Take a look at the defense for LSU. They've been hurt in the secondary, Gary, and yep. J.B. and Tobiano is going to have his hands full tonight. They do. Transfer corners, they've lost four of them, different reasons, but they are down to three true freshmen that we will see in this game at the cornerback spot. Ty Alexander, one of the key injuries for LSU, along with Makai Wingo, two guys that would have been starters, not in the lineup tonight. So here's our first third down of the ball game. Third down at seven, just inside the 29. Milrow down the middle. has got his tight end, Dupree. And Dupree's got a first down out to the 40-yard line. Well, Tommy Reese, coordinator, offensive coordinator, Jenny talked about him. What he loves about Jalen Milrow, even though he's been sacked a lot, is how calm he is in the pocket. Usually a guy that gets sacked as much as he does, he's got those happy feet. He never does. 35 sacks have been given up by Alabama. McClellan. Off the left side for about four. 
Here's the guys we're talking about that they would love to have in the lineup. Ty Alexander, Makai Wingo, out for the remainder of the season, had surgery. Yeah, and flipping on the game tape, you talked about last year's game where Jaden Daniels played so well. But I'll tell you, Wingo was a force the whole game. They will miss him as well. Pick up a four for McClellan, second down and six. Isaiah Bond, the motion man. Milrow looked that way, now steps up in the pocket, crossing route. Might have been hit as he threw, hit. intended for Nyblack. Got pressure from the outside. Braden Swinson, number 13, got outside. I think he beat Latham that time. No, he actually had the tight end blocking him. Dupree, that's a tough matchup for Dupree to handle that edge rusher. Got his arm. Rodell Williams now will check into the backfield. Second, third down occasion on his opening drive for Alabama. Last time, no pressure. Will LSU come this time? Looks like it. Oh, is it? They would have. And we got a flag or a timeout. I, I think LSU snap. call timeout. Timeout. LSU. Yes. It is their first. So LSU got the timeout call before the snap. So they'll gather around Brian Kelly, the tide around Jalen Milrow, and we'll see what happens when we come back. Brian Kelly was blowing a gasket over that timeout call. Yeah, he was. Not to her, to the officials. He <laughs> wanted to go, what is going on? Who called timeout? Who? Who? I'll tell coach? you who. Yeah, coach, tell him. Major Burns, number eight, watch this. Going across, timeout, timeout. And he... <laughs> Brian had the defense, but Major Burns didn't. Exactly. Third down at six. So they could bring pressure again. Alabama 43% of the year. The third down conversions. Milrow stands tall and now in trouble. Down he goes. Perkins has got him. Yep. Coming off the edge. The matchup against Caden Proctor. The weak spot of that Alabama offensive line all year pops up again. Ogofu was there as well, but number four, the guy Gary talked about in the pregame. Left side, help, even got help with a chip that time from the tight end and still got in there. That's a pretty good play. Yep, gets chipped. Then his quickness, look at the side of him. You know, 230, 235, he can be a force. So that brings out James Burnup to punt. Gregory Clayton back. And backpedaling for the Tigers calls a late fair catch around the 14, 15 yard line. Just 12 28. Remaining first quarter. Papa John's lineups. And we bring out Jaden Daniels. Second season at LSU. Started off at Arizona State. Transferred in last year into Baton Rouge. And we've seen him play since he was 18 years old back in a Sun Bowl game when he was with Arizona State. And boy, has he grown leaps and bounds, and he does it all. Great passer, great anticipation. His yardage and touchdowns right up there with the best in the nation. And here he is on the first snap from the 15-yard line. Daniels running out of time and running out and away from the Alabama defense as he picks up seven or eight. Caleb Downs, the freshman safety, had to make the stop. Yeah, Deontay Lawson, number 32, comes off the edge, pushes the running back right back into him, digs, and almost had the sack, but this guy's tough to corral. Second down and three. Digs. First down and just barrels his way for about five yards. For the LSU offense, the rest of the group along with Jaden Daniels. And Malik Neighbors closing in on 1,000 yards receiving. And he and Brian Thomas make one tough duo. Their numbers they're putting up, we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but they match up with some of the best duos LSU's ever had. Eye-popping numbers. Daniels. Fires on a slant and in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Neighbors. And it was broken up by Malachi Moore. So, so Malik Neighbors usually lines up in the slot right there on the inside. More of a stop hook. They used this matchup against Brian Branch a year ago. Looks like there's going to be a penalty on this play. Previous play. 
probably hitting the quarterback. Was there a late hit? I don't know. I didn't see it. Daniels, I was following the ball as well. I'm sure we'll Personal be told. Foul. Or not. Roughing the passer, apparently the call, although we didn't get it from the referee. First down anyway by penalty at the 42. Josh Williams in the lineup in the backfield for the Tigers. Daniels is going to throw it to him out in the flat. And Daniels gets about five. Let's go back to that last play, the roughing the passer penalty. We couldn't figure out what it was. We just assumed. And how uh, that can't be roughing no. the passer. There's got to be something else somewhere. <laughs> Even the players are looking around like, what was the flag about? I mean, that you, you're not allowed to trip on the playground, but out here, you know, I mean. <laughs> well, it, it would have helped if the referee would have turned his mic on and told exactly. us about it. I hope it wasn't left in the past. If it was, it's the worst call we've seen so far this year. Second down and four. Williams, he's got a first down and still keeps those legs driving. As LSU moves into Alabama territory. So four out of the five offensive linemen for this LSU offensive line played in this game a year ago. And that time they ran right at Dellinger, number 72. He played right guard last year. But both tackles, who, by the way, were true freshmen right. a year ago. They've grown up. Now they're you know, seasoned events <laughs> a year later. Five minutes into the game, no score. But LSU on the Alabama side of the 50. Mason Taylor, the tight end in motion. Daniels loads going deep man out there's neighbors he's got it touchdown LSU by the way off the slot against the safety Malachi Moore does it sound familiar Tennessee game a year ago LSU is going to do the same thing they're going to see if that slot man that safety which one of these guys will cover and help no help I'm just right down the middle have to think in the Nick Saban defense some bracket was busted by yeah. somebody you don't see a safety with outside technique let their best receiver run right straight down the and field you can see the frustration on coach Saban's face for that very reason a 46 yard touchdown Damian Ramos in for the point after up and good so the Tigers draw first an 85-yard drive. They got some help from penalties, but they got no help on number eight. 46-yard touchdown to Neighbors for Malik, his 10th of the year. And the Tigers lead 7-0. Jaden Daniels, his 26th touchdown pass of the year to cap that opening drive for the Tigers for the score. LSU with the lead on the road. And from the one yard line, Kendrick Law will bring it. And he got it out close to the 25. Ness, let's try to help out this uh, penalty that led to everything. Here's the matchup right here. Will Campbell on Dallas Turner. It's hands to the face mask, right? there at the end watch him push him back that's the call it was quick but it was closer than roughing the passer that's, that's for sure <laughs> Jalen Milrow one out of three for 11 yards on Alabama's opening drive so and after watching that if you're Alabama you're thinking uh, we might not be able to play ball control here no we're, we're gonna, gonna have, have to score you got it they started to 24 No row. That wide open flat there to Kendrick Law. And he got the corner and he's still going. And he flips out to the 40 yard line. Yeah, this is a little uh, formation that has been good to Alabama and they're expanding it. Coming into the backfield, getting Law running play action pass and using his quickness out of the backfield has been successful for them lately and they're building on it. Pickup of 16. Nye Black settles in on the right side, the tight end spot. Jan Miller 
On the carry for Alabama. Ooh, took a shot. They're even going to ask Kendrick Law to come in and do ISO blocking from that position. He's listed as a wide receiver, but Ooh. tried to get in there and block someone. Greg Penn, the leading tackler for LSU, shows you why. That big hit. After a pickup of four. Second down and six. Again, a different looking formation for Alabama. Now they move out of it with two tight ends and the tailback to the top of the screen. Milrow looked that way, wanted to come back the other way. Now he might have to do it with his legs. And he, and he did. First down. That's the similarities, okay? These quarterbacks, when you think you've got them in the pocket, both are great athletes. There's probably Jalen Milrose as fast as any player on this Alabama football team. I don't know if he's going to win the race, but he would be in the race. <laughs> and you can see him run away from the brush and make a first down. Got around Perkins at the very last to get that first down. Play fake. Milrose throws the out. Got it complete. And that's to Prentice. Kobe Prentice. Different way to use your slot receiver. They call this a sail route. Bring your slot into the middle of the field and then find the opening. You'll come in here and out to the sideline, clear it to the outside, have a back in the flat. All three layers are covered. Plenty of time to throw. Jermaine Burton away from the ball, getting tangled up on the other side. Tommy Reese told us yesterday we want to get Kobe Prentice involved. Well, he did there for the first down throw to the 23. And now it's Milrow all the way. Jalen Milrow will walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. Hey, remember how Jalen Burton got hit in the face? Watch him keep his calm and play the next play and get a key block to the outside of this play for Alabama. There's the block. There it is. Sealed it off. Jalen did the rest. Will Reichert in for the point after. Up and good. Midway, first quarter. The Tide and the Tigers deadlocked at seven. Jalen Milrow, sixth rushing touchdown of the year. And we're all tied up. Stay in the know with CBS Sports HQ, the 24-7-3 network that brings you the latest news picks, scores, and highlights of all the sports you love. Watch CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. 7-14 remaining first quarter is our time. And our tie game between the Tigers and the Crimson Tide, courtesy of Jalen Milrose, 23-yard touchdown run. And that's one thing we're sure of. We're not going to have a 9-6. <laughs> I was waiting how long you're going to take <laughs> to bring that one up. <laughs> we're looking for like a Burrow type game. Yeah, you know, like maybe 2019. Yeah, huh? wait, wait. It's going to be one of those, it looks like. Will Reichard's kick. Fair catch taken for at the goal line. And as they bring it out to the 25, it's time for Do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. And one of the reasons, if you have a tool, you know the guys are always proud of something they have in their toolbox? <laughs> I got the most powerful saw. Well, the deep ball, Jalen Milrow, so proud. Second in the nation, throwing the ball over 20 yards. The only problem is in this game. There's another tool. And he's got one a little <laughs> strong, okay? And he's already showed it in this game with his deep ball for the touchdown. No doubt. That one was to Malik Neighbors, 46 yards. And now it's LSU from the 25. Daniels throws the out and in and out of the hands. Nice play by Terry on Arnold over there on the corner, intended for Lacey. We talked about Nick Saban's pride and joy, bump and run to the outside. Kool-Aid on one side, Arnold on the other. Two of them take a lot of pride in doing that right there. It's the slot and the safeties. Nick said, I'm worried about safeties. We don't have a lot of experience at that position. Crowd getting loud for the first time tonight. Second down and 10. Quarterback draw, Jaden Daniels in the open field. 
He's got 20 or more, and then he sits down at the end of it, just on this side of midfield. So one of the things you talk about when you got a running quarterback like Jaden Daniels is you want to hit him. You want to make him pay a price. The problem is the guy is hard to hit. And when you do, you watch him pop up. He has a toughness about him. No doubt. 24 more yards on the ground for him. Out to the 49-yard line. Grinding for about four is Diggs, the transfer from Notre Dame, Alabama defense. Chris Braswell, there was a question mark. He's the other bookend on the side from Dallas Turner, second on the team in sacks, but he's out there and is playing and did start tonight. Good news for the linebacking core for Alabama. Second trip into tied territory for the Tigers, second down and seven. At the 48, and a whistle, and a false start. False start, offense, number two. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. Kyron Lacey with the false start, took an early jump. And the Tigers of 2019 that we were talking about, J Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Neighbors and Thomas have better numbers right now. Yeah. I didn't think we'd ever see that again. No, I thought it'd be a few years before we talked about <laughs> like that. But this is the first step for those two guys, and getting in the NFL and duplicating with those two guys at the next level yeah, we'll is the next step. Yeah. And time another out. timeout. The crowd will be more enthused. They're feeling they're part of the game. They are right now at the five and a half minute mark, first quarter. And now, Taster Tradition presented by Sonic. 73 Alabama football team rolled through an undefeated regular season led by running back Wilbur Jackson, the first black American to be offered a football scholarship by the Tide, although they lost to Notre Dame in the Sugar Bowl. The coaches' poll still named them the national champions at season's end. And earlier day, another star on that team, Sylvester Croom, celebrated 50th anniversary of that championship. Along with some of his tied teammates, they were honored on the field before the game. Congratulations, fellas. Doesn't seem like it's been that long, but okay, <laughs> 50 years. 5.31 remaining. LSU only has one timeout left, and we've still got 20 minutes to play in this first half. You know, the noise is affecting the LSU offense, but it's also a challenge for the Alabama defensive backfield because they have to communicate as well. Low snap that Daniels handles has plenty of time and he's going to go deep again into traffic this time and broken up intended for neighbors and it was Jalen Key who was shaken up but made this play and knocked it away. Yeah this time Alabama kept a safety deep in the back end right there and he looked at the quarterback and was able to get back and help out on the play and you said that Nick Saban's worried about the amount of depth that's safety and he just lost number six here at least for a play or two we hope not much more holding his left hip it looks like and you can imagine LSU fans are going wait a second they both of them were into the body of the receiver before the ball got there should that not be called. And that's Jalen Key going to the tent. Christian Story has come in to take his spot in the secondary on a third down and 12. Best team in the country on third down conversions. Daniels throws short. Taylor, the tight end, didn't get there. It'll be about a yard shy, I think. Yeah. Brian Kelly now sensing the type of game it is. Short yardage, powerful offense. Will he go for it? Just slip the tight end, chip, and go out, getting it close for a first down. And Story's the guy that just came in to make the tackle that left him that much short of the first down. And here they go, fourth down. Brian Kelly and the Tigers are five out of nine on fourth down conversions this year. It will be Jaden Daniels. Although he's in the shotgun, he's got the wheels to pick it up for sure. 
And again, a low snap, and he's going to throw for it. And it's broken up by Malachi Moore. Great job reading this rub play by this Alabama secondary and the veteran Malachi Moore. Number 13, watch the short motion and the Alabama defensive backs have to switch. Then McCor Malachi reads it and runs right for the receiver. He didn't even look back for the ball. He just ran, stuck his arm out and timed it perfectly. So the tide takes over on downs as their defense stops a fourth and short. We'll see if that ends up being any harm to the Tigers as Alabama's offense takes the field at the 42 yard line. Taylor Milrow throws short to Isaiah Bond. And Bond run out of bounds as we check in with Jenny. Well, it's hard to believe, but in the offseason, Jalen Milrow doesn't spend a single second on running drills. He's focusing all of his time on his throwing program. He told me, why waste time running when it's God given? He said in game, his intent is always to throw the ball. Now, if there's time, of course, he's confident in his abilities, which we've already seen tonight. Guys, Milrow said he's ready for whatever Coach Tommy Reese calls. Well, when they involve him in the running game, they've been a much yeah. different and better team, that's for sure. And they gave a little taste to LSU of what Alabama faced with that little slip out to the sideline right there. That hurt Bama last year. Milrow gonna go deep. He does this well too, but uh, Nye Black can't get to it. Incomplete. Nye Black, the kind of hybrid tight end slot receiver, lined up in the tight end position right there. Gets out, good one on one. That's who to go to. He had him just slightly overthrew him. That'll bring up third down and three. Yeah, you dream of a matchup like that if you're a quarterback, the middle linebacker on your hybrid tight end wide receiver. Two Quick in. snap and a toss to Jace McClellan. He got to the edge and got the first down into LSU territory. Looked like think, LSU was shooting. I thought LSU had 12 defense. men on the field right there. Yep. I don't think he got off to the outside. I think they had 12 anyway. Alabama went with the quick snap. They got the toss and they got the first down anyway. But yeah, by the way, that is a reviewable play. Matt House in charge of this defense for the second year with Brian Kelly, defensive coordinator. Came to LSU out of the NFL with the Kansas City Chiefs. First down, Alabama at the LSU 45. McClellan trying to weave his way through some traffic there. Got a couple before he stood up. Remember, this is the matchup that most people, you know, watching the game, whether they're experts or casual fans or fans of each team, said this could be the matchup that decides the game. You know, it's a great offense of LSU against the great defense of Alabama, but which one of these struggling units is going to have the Baylor football game here? And I could determine the game. Jan Miller comes back in at tailback for the Tide. On second down and eight, Milrow over the middle, completes it to Bond, and Isaiah Bond's got a first down. Ness, you said Jam Miller came into the game, and you know what he did? Picked up the blitz. Watch him step up and take on the blitz, number 26. You got to go meet it. Don't wait for it. And he goes up and meets it, and that cleans out the easy throw. So Alabama moving it methodically down the field at the 34-yard line with two and a half minutes to go in the quarter. Three receivers to Jalen Milrose right, Jermaine Burton is to the left and now Dupree the tight end comes into the core of the offense. Bill Rowe, plenty of time. Far sideline got it to Bond. First down. So it's an outside technique by LSU. He has help to the inside does Sage Ryan but he still gets beat to the outside. He has a safety inside their nest. He cannot get beat to the outside of the field. That was a long throw and it was perfect. Yep. 22 yard pickup. Calmly throwing the ball downfield. Both of these quarterbacks love to throw those 20 yard shots. So in the red zone for the tide at the 13. On the run is Milrow, and he got somehow through that traffic 
and got to the edge. A good game. As Jack got given. I tell you that, and he could run the first day he came here. What he needed to work on was his quarterback play, reading it, calmness. He's doing that, but he can always produce this. Had some nice stiff arms along the way. Yeah, the last one could have been face mask. Right. But rarely, I've seen it called, but rarely is it called. That one could have been. So Alabama can get a first down. Around the three yard line right now it's second down and five. Everybody in tight. And under center is Milrow. Miller. And he's going to be about a yard shy. Major Burns again in on the tackle. Last year's game, Bryce Young was in it. What hurt Alabama in this game is twice in the first half, they got the ball to the five yard line against LSU in last year's game. One, an interception, next a field goal. Let's see if they can punch it in. Let's see if it's a quarterback keeper. It is Jalen Milrow back in, in for the touchdown. Put it in reverse and score. This was the design, but it sure worked because Jam Miller jams him into the end zone. <laughs> and Milrow's got his second rushing touchdown of the night. Points were left on the board a year ago, came back to haunt Alabama. This time, they stick it in the end zone. Will Reichert in for the point after. Remember, this all started after the Alabama defense came up with a fourth down stop. And then 58 yards later and nine plays later, Jalen Milrow, his seventh rushing touchdown of the year, and the tide rolls to the lead. Jalen Milrow, a good first quarter for Alabama with his legs as well as some timely throws in that last drive. Third time this year with more than one rushing touchdown. The kickoff goes to the four-yard line to Jackson. And nice job by Alabama's coverage unit as he doesn't get out to the 20-yard line. Tomorrow, week nine of the NFL on CBS. Outstanding interconference matchup between the Seahawks and the Ravens. It all starts with JB and the guys on the NFL today. Tomorrow, NFL on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell. Here late in the first quarter in Tuscaloosa tonight 21 points in the first quarter. Yeah, last year's game was low scoring until the fourth quarter. Yeah the final score was deceiving exactly. Really. Might be the final play of this quarter. Three receivers to the left they're going to keep it on the ground and straight ahead out across the 20. Goes Logan Diggs, and that probably is going to do it for the first quarter. So number 14 and number 8 have an at it in Tuscaloosa. And the first 15 minutes comes to a close. LSU struck early on the long ball to Malik Neighbors from Jaden Daniels. Jalen Milrow answers with two rushing touchdowns of his own. And at the end of one, tied 14, Tigers 7. The home depot, SEC on CBS, enters quarter number two at Brian Denny Stadium. 14-7, Alabama in front. LSU, second down and five from the 22. Jaden Daniels going to try to scramble out of trouble, and he got away from everybody. And here he goes, Daniels' second long run of the night. Tiptoes out of bounds with a big game. So that time Alabama chose to have Justin Avoici, number 92, as the other defensive end in the game. See him on the right side of your screen. Only one fast defensive end, just I think it was Dallas Turner, might have been Braswell, but they did not have speed on the field, and that's why Daniels ran away from it. A 28-yard gain that time right to the midfield stripe. And maybe a three-yard game for Diggs. At the end of the first quarter, Jenny caught up with Nick Saban. 
Coach, how do you like Jalen Milrow's decision making in the first quarter? He's done great so far. You know, we got to take what the defense gives, and I think he's done a good job of that. We got a little pressure a couple times. We got to do a better job up front. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. <laughs> Minute into the second quarter, second down and seven. At the Alabama 47 for Jaden Daniels. Directs his troops and sets neighbors up on the left side. Daniels, the deep drop, scanning the field. Again, being pressured, throws on the run. And he threw a strike to neighbors. Wow. Man, that's it. You know, they have the field watching him of just, you know, he can do whatever he wants. If you're not in his face, quickly and just a three-man rush this time by Alabama so he stands there but watch when he rips the ball loose afterwards that ball is thrown so first he does it 28 yards with his legs and then he throws this rocket right here 22 more yards to his favorite target neighbors and just like that LSU's down inside the Alabama 25 They bring an extra man. Daniels had it tipped. Almost intercepted by Deontay Lawson. Yep. Somebody got a hand on that one. They did. Yep. Good protection by that offensive line up front. But just at the end, they almost off the helmet that time of Otis. Yep. That's the way you use your noggin, Otis. Yep. So he noticed number 91 pushing, getting some push in the pocket, got close enough, didn't he? Yep. We have not seen any of the triple option package where they put Mason number 86 in motion and then run that option where he slides out in the flat so effective a year ago. Straight run this time. Diggs nothing doing. Back to the line of scrimmage if he's lucky. Avoidance there. And it's going to be third down and long. This year, these Tigers <laughs> remind us a little bit of the Joe Burrow Tigers of four years ago, first in a lot of categories. Yeah, but this is by far the best defense they faced all year at Florida State to open the season. But this one is a stiffer test. Here's their biggest third down of the first half so far. Taylor in motion there. And now settles in. Daniels Nothing. and whoa, did he Not get that rocked time. that time? <laughs> A boy to be again. Collapse the pocket. Those big front men for Alabama. Remember one time Daniels gets outside, but inside they're squeezing him and nowhere to go. Ooh. He's going to feel that one all the way to the sideline and then some. That's what the Alabama defensive linemen are taught to do. Get your hands on that offensive lineman, peek around, and then shed him and make the play. Damian Ramos in for the point after, or in for the field goal attempt, uh, 47 yards. Kick on the way, no good. Wide right. Had the distance, but it just stayed out there. His long of the year was 48. That attempt was 48. Not this time. 14 to 7, Alabama, as you look at the end zone from our AT&T pylon camp. Jalen Milrow has been in the end zone twice. Malik Neighbors has been in it once, courtesy of a 47-yard touchdown pass from Jaden Daniels. But the first three possessions, first a punt, and then back-to-back -back touchdowns. Alabama looking for more. Milrow loaded it up, and now he's not going to be able to get rid of it. He goes down with the sack. And with that, we get a Heisman Watch update presented by Nissan. Here's Zook. Yeah, Ness, we're also watching a battle between last year's Heisman winner and a leading candidate. Huge Pac-12 showdown. Michael Penix Jr. running all over the place for Washington. And the nation's leading passer finds Devin Culp to tie it up against SC 14 apiece. Caleb Williams, another candidate this year. All right, Penix took about 20 seconds to get that play going. 
Got the touchdown. Here's second down and 13 after Jalen Milrow was sacked on the last snap. And now he's going to keep this one. Ooh. Well, he got some of that yardage back, and he let the defender know it over there on the corner. And that was Ashton Stamps. Yeah, Ashton Stamps, the true freshman, one of the players that are filling in in that secondary. He's going to get filled up Ooh. on this one. But he stuck his nose in there. I mean, you can get knocked down. There's no embarrassment. At least the embarrassment is not to try to make the tackle. But how do you like your quarterback willing to do that? Ooh. And both these guys are carrying the mail for their teams on the ground. Third down and eight. Jace McClellan switches sides, flanking Jalen Milrow. He's looking left. And now he's in a heap of trouble. He lobs it to McClellan on the run. Jace McClellan down the sideline. Big play on just a little shot put pass from Jalen Milrow. How did he find him? How was that possible? He was cornered on this play. McKellen is right there, right next to him. He takes on a block, and then he just floats out. He was not supposed to be in the pattern. That is keeping your head up Ooh. as a quarterback. 42 yards down to the 27-yard line. Talk about calmness under pressure. Jalen Milrow, what a play. Each team with four plays already of 20 plus, some chunk yardage on the ground through the air. Yeah, we talked about those deep balls. That was just a little shot put. Right. And flags fly before this one, before McClellan can get going. False start. Offense, number 81. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. You know, it's funny watching the way this Alabama offense has opened up for Jalen Milrow. A lot of it is field position. Alabama's had the book because of the fourth down play when they stopped them in the fake field on the missed field goal. They've had the ball in great field position a year ago. Alabama started the ball at the 20, the 10, the 11, the 10, the 19. They had terrible field position in the first half. Big difference. Five-yard penalty makes it first and 15. Roydell Williams flushes out of the backfield up to the top of your screen. So an empty set for Jalen Milrow. Look out from behind. Let's it fly in the corner. Incomplete. Intended for Kobe Prentice. Jalen Milrow never afraid to throw that ball downfield. He loves to throw the deep ball. Put it up. Give your guy a shot. Andre Sam was a guy back there covering. So seven of 11 for 128 yards for Jalen. You know, with all the change in the secondary, you have to throw the ball against it, don't you? And this time he's going to do the quarterback draw. And got inside the 25. Major Burns made the tackle. Throw it on first down. I don't, I don't know if this was even. I don't know if he made up his mind quick. I didn't see anybody pull and lead him out. That, that just could have been his making up his own mind. If the first guy wasn't there, I was going to get it out of the pocket. Here's an attempted screen. That really never materialized at all. And Greg Penn blew it up. Yeah, do your assignment. You're going to bring... Um, that secondary on the outside, the linebackers got to account for that running back. And Greg Penn, right here, he's got the running back. Stay with him, beat the lineman there, and he does. Will Reichard out to attempt a field goal. He hasn't missed a field goal or extra point all this year. Same story in 2020. He's the all-time leading scorer in SEC uh -oh. history. And oh, boy. No good. Sorry, Will. Both kickers slid it to the right. Now he's very capable of making that, and he knows it. And he knew that one was pushed. And we stay at 14-7. Second quarter, still 14-7. That's time 
for our reliable connection presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Jenny? Well, Brad, Brian Kelly and Mike Denbrock have been together through many different stops. They were at Division II Grand Valley State for six years. Denbrock joined Kelly for two separate stints at Notre Dame. And here they are reunited at LSU. Coach Kelly said he was looking for an established presence that he trusts for the Tigers, guys. There he is. The second guy in right there, Mike. 16 years together. They know each other and how they're thinking alike. Jaden Daniels now, the first down at the 29. After the missed field goal, John Emery in the backfield with him. Daniels zips it down the middle. He's got it to Neighbors, and Neighbors still going. Out across the 40 and a first down. Look how open this is. Slot pass. Remember, he's the key receiver. Gets in Mal inside Malachi Moore, and that zone defense had a big hole in it. First down at the 40. Pistol set here for the Tigers. And it's a keeper by Daniels who picks up five. We work our way down near the six minute mark. In front of a packed house in Tuscaloosa. 88th renewal for the Tigers and the Crimson Tide. And the SEC West in a battle for the top spot in the West. And for you Ole Miss fans, I'm not forgetting about you. I know you're five and one. <laughs> I think they're all partying. I don't know if they're watching. <laughs> Probably are. Second and five. Quick throw to the outside. This one's to Thomas, finally. His other receiver. A guy that's putting up big numbers as well. Hasn't been a big part of the first half so far. Just goes out to the outside, runs a little hitch. Hitch all the way in. Inside receiver Art Anderson was also the transfer from Alabama. Ran a hitch the same way. Ball went to the proper guy. Thomas actually has more touchdown catches than Neighbors. He has 11. Neighbors with one tonight has 10. So that's a one-two punch for Jaden Daniels, who set the throw on first down again. Across the middle, and that's Thomas again. So back to back times to number 11 for big yardage. Boy, here's the theme of the day just throw the ball to your crossing routes. The Alabama man to man got confused that time. That was in and out coverage. And that time, Arnold go, I thought you were going to take him because it's too late for me to catch up. Mistakes in the secondary by this Alabama coverage. And a flag flies here after that 23 yard gain gets LSU down near the red All zone sides. again. Defense number 96 in the neutral zone with contact. Five yard penalty remains first down. And Tim Keenan, the guilty party. Here's the two guys we were talking about. One leads the nation in receiving yardage, and one is tied for the most touchdown catches. Not bad if you're Jaden Daniels going. Yeah, I like both number eight and number yeah, 11. They're, they're great size, both of them do great targets, especially down here in the red zone. Emery stays in at the tailback spot after a free five has moved the Tigers into the red zone at the 19-yard line. Taylor on the move. And Emery trying to go wide and avoid three. What a first half 92's had. He does. So I'm out there at practice on Thursday. When he wasn't in there, he had the script and he was reading them and he was telling everybody what to do. <laughs> That's a veteran out there right yeah. now. Takes his business seriously. He's had a serious good half on that defensive line spot. We, we've not seen a lot of Braswell. He did not practice much on Thursday. We're told he was going to play. We have not seen much of 41. He did start, but he's not there right now. Dallas Turner is in a track stance, though. Trying to come after Jaden Daniels, who throws right over his head. Incomplete intended for Emery. And he got twisted around and couldn't get a hand on it. Yeah, he read the hot this time, but did not deliver an accurate pass. He reads coming off the edge right here, and he's going to give it to the back. That's who should get it. Give it to him. Not accurate. An accurate ball could have perhaps turned up at least for the first down. Braswell back in the game. Now they got their two edge rushers in on third down. Very even game so far in just about every capacity, except Alabama's got seven more on the board. LSU's trying to change that here. 
Third down and five. The crowd trying to be a factor again. Daniels throws to the outside. This one's on target to neighbors, and he's got it. First and goal around the eight-yard line. Well, this is a very pretty rub. The motion, Alabama's a little bit slow getting on the motion. Watch motion, watch the slowness. He's behind the play all the way. Easy throw to the outside, and this one, as Ness said, accurate. So a thousand yard season with that grab. Joining Josh Reed, second player in school history with over a thousand receiving yards back to back. Emery clears out of the backfield. When they go empty, they love to run the quarterback. From the nine yard line, and it's the quarterback straight up the middle and now cutting to the end zone. Touchdown, LSU. Well, if I know it, LSU must know that Alabama knows it. And even if they did know it, they didn't <laughs> stop it. That's right. It looked like it was going to be a short game, but Daniels just kept wheeling it. Up the middle. Right sets there. Up. Yep, keeps, that time keeps Marshall in the hole by attacking inside and then bounces out for the touchdown. Damian Ramos in for the point after. Nice mixture of run and pass for LSU on that drive. So our quarterbacks with their legs, we knew it would be a factor. Two on the ground for Jalen Milrow, and now one from Jaden Daniels. Caps a 71-yard drive in eight plays, and we're even again at 14. Track meets there, Zuck. Good game there, good game here. 21-21, the Coliseum, 14-14 in Tuscaloosa. Kendrick Law will bring it back for Alabama. Across the 25 to the 26. And that's where the tie will go to work with three minutes remaining and three timeouts. Star studded NWSL semifinals kick off tomorrow at 7 Eastern over on CBS Sports Network. It's all leading up to the championship game next Saturday right here on CBS and streaming live on Paramount Plus. Alabama on offense, all their timeouts. LSU only has one. And 3.03 to work for Jalen Milrow and company. There's the numbers and the quarterback comparison. Pretty darn even. So that beleaguered LSU defense got the field goal try that was missed. Let's see if they can get another stop. Here's a little underhand pitch to Jan Miller, and that's going to be a loss on the play. So Jalen Milrow. Even though he doesn't like to practice running, has showed you that he can run. So far in the first half, might be as big a story as they are as the way they've attacked with Milrow in the running game. Follows Robbie Oots that time, and then the touchdown play blocked very well by Burton, nine block, and a walk-in. On second time and 10, far side. Good throw, Jermaine Burton. Or is he out of bounds? Sideline over there. We never, say it, he was never, out of bounds. never trust the opposing sideline. <laughs> <laughs> they always signal not good. Oh, he's in. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. That's a defensive lineman, too, that's doing that. He's not in. So third down and three. A big third down here to try to keep any kind of drive alive. Yeah, for what points. are you going to do if you're Tommy Reese right here? Run your quarterback, a pass. Interesting call. Milrow going to throw to Jam Miller on a little wheel route. Miller inside the 40 and down to the 33-yard line. Wow, how about a great play call. LSU and Harold Perkins, they attack number four. Perkins thinks it's going to be a short pass, but it's a deep one. Everybody thinks they're going to throw to the sticks. They go deep. Reese wins that matchup. 34-yard pickup, and now Milrow will keep this one. And tiptoe out of bounds. You know, Harold Perkins can do a lot of things on the football field, but sometimes those great players you want to throw right at them. And this one, perfect touch <laughs> for the big play. They say what a great player he is defensively in space. He was lost in space a little bit yeah, on that, that one. one. He probably had the running back right from the get-go. He took one step in, and he was beat. So Alabama has got plenty of time here. 
Ah! Melro pumped once. Now he's going deep and almost picked off. Nice coverage back there by Major Burns. I tell you, Jill, he's, he's a cool customer in the pocket. I, again, I, you know, I've done this. Been a while ago, but I can remember <laughs> when you're getting sacked, you get nervous, you know, and past experience gets in your head. But he just hangs in there. He trusts. He trusts, and he attacks with the football. Got a LSU player down defensively. That's why we've got a round of boos here, thinking that they're trying to slow down Alabama's offense. It is Major Burns down on the turf. A third down and six for Alabama, and we'll check on Burns when we come back. I like that, Adam. Yeah, good one. Another guy we saw early in his career, right? Yep. At Auburn, great transfer to Oregon. Here's the end of the play. Major Burns, his guy that made the play, got a hand on that pass and then really hit hard on his face mask. He got up and looked like he was okay until he took a few more steps and then this. Yeah, and you got to give him the battle for the doubt here. I did not see him look over at the bench and get a signal. He just may have been a bit dizzy and he took a stand. That's going to be on LSU, I think. They were in the neutral zone. Let's see what happens here. Everybody pointing in the other direction. I, I think it was a reaction by Booker on this play. Seth McLaughlin, the center in there, saying, no, 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 no. Wasn't us. I think it's going to be on LSU. False start. Offense, Whoa. number 52. Five-yard penalty. Yeah, what is he supposed down. to do? I thought when the neutral zone was encroached right at him, you could make a move. Watch this play. Oh, I think that's a normal reaction. I do not like that call. If he was going sideways, that'd be one thing. But it's right after him. Dean Steritor has had a long day. Gene, you agree with us? That, yeah, I definitely do, Brad. Look, he's, he's in the neutral zone when the offense reacts. That's a defensive foul for sure. Yes. Milro trying to run out of trouble. Jalen Milro still going, looking for a block. And he got out at the 21 yard line with an Alabama first down. Well, there's no neutral zone when Jalen Milro has the ball. He's all fast forward, right up the middle, poor rush lanes. And when you got these great athletes at quarterback, you can't do that. You must force him to get outside of the pocket wide. Remember now, they've still got all three timeouts, a minute and 20 to work with. He sure as heck didn't want to give the ball to LSU with a minute to go. Nope. Just outside the red zone at the 22 for the tide. Milro scans the field. He's going to take off again. No, he's going to throw late. Oh. And would have been a touchdown, a walk-in for Isaiah Bond, and that one just sailed out of And you could say he had plenty of room to run, but you can't turn down a touchdown. Watch how, I mean, he's clapping hands. He knows he missed a touchdown here. This is the right decision. Whew. That one took off on him. <laughs> oh. Bond looks behind him like is nobody can be behind me, right? Back to the drawing board. Second out of ten. Run all the way for Milrow. Blockers in front, but not enough blockers. Maybe got a yard. And the guy that made the play lost his helmet. That's Tobiano, and he's going to have to come out for at least a play. Coming up, Geico Halftime Report, Adam, Rick, and BJ. All the highlights of today, and they'll give their perspective on our first half. Really have to salute those LSU DBs. You know, called into action. Three true freshmen are in the game. Toviano, one of them. They haven't been perfect, obviously, but, you know, they're out there. They were not expected to be playing in this game, I can tell you that. Remember, LSU gets the ball first to start the third quarter, so Alabama would love a score here with just over a minute to go in this quarter. Milro thinking about throwing it again, and now he takes off. Jalen Milro, touchdown, Alabama. On third and nine, a 21 yard touchdown scamper. Watch his acceleration. He's pretending that he's going to throw the ball to the outside. He knows he's going to keep it. Then watch his acceleration when he turns up right now. Boom. 
He's a 4-4 sprinter, and you saw it right there. Put it in overdrive when he made that cut. He's got his third rushing touchdown of the night. And LSU's offside on the extra point. It's up and good by Riker. And the right side of the LSU defense jumped. Offsides. Defense, number four. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is the try is good. Not a bad drive. Nine plays. The quarterback missed one easy one, but he finished one good one. <laughs> That's for sure. Nine plays and 74 yards and a little over two minutes in the tide. Back in front, courtesy of number four. Right now, get a free foot long at Subway. Like the new Deli Heroes. Buy one foot long in the app, get one free. It's a pretty big deal. Kinda like me. Order in the Subway app today. I'm Branch's brother. Grandma, call me, Dinkles. <laughs> This is your second chance with your brothers, Branch. Wet Willie! Stop. I am a grown-up. Sorry. A wet William. Trolls band together. Ready PG. Zayla Miro does that million-dollar smile. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> 21 to 14. We visited with him a couple weeks ago before the Tennessee game. Was that what yeah, it was? Yeah. yeah. He came in just like that. <laughs> and it only got better as we talked to him more and more. And then after that, the Jenny interview with the cigars and Nick that Saban, and that yeah. was awesome. So watch this acceleration from field level here. You can tell from the crowd in the background when he turns it on. Easy, easy, easy. Ooh. Oof. Man. 165 through the air. 83 on the ground and three times in the end zone on the ground. Isn't it interesting when we were visiting with Tommy Reese prior to that Tennessee game? I go, when are you going to start using Milrose legs? And he yep. goes, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Well, here it is. Now, one timeout left for LSU and 101 remaining on the clock from the 25. A little touch pass to Jackson, and that doesn't gain much. They're going to set up in a hurry and see if they can get a first down and maybe get something going to get down in field goal territory. Daniels to the near side, nobody home, way short of Malik Neighbors, the closest guy. Stop route to the outside. He's on Kool Aid McKintree to the bottom of the screen right here. Stop. Just poor accuracy with the throw. Quarterback receiver not on the same page on that one. And now, with 36 seconds left, third down and nine. Yeah, and Alabama with all three timeouts. Right. They do not want to give it back to Jalen Milrow. Daniels going to take off on his own. He's going to get the first down, and he's still going. Daniels, can they track him down? Finally, they do. Wow, what a run again. I hope we don't have a camera on Nick Saban right now because he might pop a blood vessel in his other eye after this one right here. <laughs> Letting the quarterback get free on this, this amount of time on the clock. It's the one thing they could not have. Kevin Steele said to us, when Daniels scrambles, it's not for tenor. 11 yards it's for 30 or 40 or 50 that was for 40 both of these guys are such weapons flag down here with 24 seconds to go in the half snap infraction offense LSU is elected to take their third time out to offset the 10 second runoff Timeout, LSU. So there's their last timeout gone to not have a runoff on the clock and save as many seconds as they could. And yeah, it was the center that oh time. Yeah. Yes. He moved it right into his own body and then tried to put it back down. Turner. It's not going to work for Charles Turner. Burned a very valuable timeout. Now remember, college ball a little different. If you do get a first down compared to the NFL, you clock will stop, give you time to get up and spike the ball. So you can still throw anywhere on the field with this play. 
Ramos career long is 48 yards. Take a peek on that last tackle on Daniels. Yes, that could have been called as a horse collar. First and 15. More importantly, no timeouts for the Tigers. They'll empty the backfield again. Daniels taking a lot of time and now taking off again. Jaden Daniels inside the 20. Daniels all the way to the sideline where he has to go out and now we got a late flag at the end of the run and that took 11 seconds and Terry and Arnold is down yeah there there might have been a late block on the play yes a late clip from behind Ooh, and then he ran into his own man yes personal foul illegal blindside block offense number one the 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run First down. Either way, whether this block was a blindside or a clip, it was a silly block from behind. Right there. Yep, even if we've gotten in front of him, we've been called blindside block. And for Caleb Downs. I think the worst of it is after Caleb Downs, his own man. Yeah, I think Terry and Arnold is the guy. And I remember Arnold was concussed earlier this season to miss some time and he's up and walking off so that's a good sign and they'll have to be very careful and check him out the second one could be very dangerous he's telling his teammates I'm good I'm good yeah but this doesn't feel good right there and that's after getting shoved from behind so the penalty is going to move it back outside the 20. So it was a first down on the play, and then it'll come back. Right. First down in one. So a good one. You haven't have a lot of these. First and one. First and one, but it's at the 26. And complicated with no timeouts. And only 13 seconds. So you got a couple of plays. Can't hold it long because if you don't. Daniels throws, caught, and a touchdown. Kyron Lacey. Boy, he poured this one in, didn't he? Remember we were talking about Alabama doesn't want to score too early? I guess they did, but it was the two big runs and then he pours it inside to Lacey. With time basically running out in the half, Jaden Daniels does this. Yep. And then the run after catch, about 10 extra yards. Yep. Spun in, he was in, we took another look at it, his knee wasn't down. What? Two great drives by these two great quarterbacks and their football teams. What a first half. Ramos in for the point after. Third tie of the game. And just remember this. LSU will get the ball to start the second half. It looks like one of those games, whoever has the ball last will win. This is the key play right here. 40 yards. Alabama, look, guys, in the backfield, Story has got his back to Jaden Daniels as he's running, covering his man man-to-man. -man. He has no idea. And then the throw, the spin, and a touchdown drive to finish the half. LSU knows that a 56-second drive in 75 yards in just five plays might end up being the difference in the ball game when you score late in the second quarter, and then you get the second half kickoff in the third. If you get points out of that, that middle four minutes or middle eight minutes. Now, uh, Jaden Daniels is drawing a lot of comparisons, you know, for the NFL draft. I mean, it seems to me that he's going to go very, very high. People talk to about him as being, you know, look at Anthony Richardson went high. You I know. think he's more polished. Oh, than yeah. Anthony oh, way more polished. Richardson's size is what got him and his measure bills. Jaden Daniels is way more. You can see he's going to be a top 10 pick. 
There's still two seconds left. I mean, he's got Lamar Jackson's skills the way he can run in the, in the free open space. Don't miss the series premiere of Lawman Bass Reeves streaming tomorrow exclusively on Paramount Plus. There'll be a couple of shootouts with Bass Reeves. We got a shootout in Tuscaloosa. 21 21. And two seconds remaining. The line of scrimmage is the 41 yard line. We know Jalen Milrow can throw it way down there, but so does LSU. They got four guys about 40 yards back in coverage. And let's see if he's going to uncork one here. Jermaine Burton, I don't think, has caught a pass tonight. No rope. And a flag. Fly is going to be a holding call, probably, and it'll negate a big run for him to end the half. So LSU will holding. decline. Offense, number 65. The penalty is declined. The half is over. It's been quite a half, though. Boy, it's been a lot of fun. When you watch number four and number five, between number 14 and number eight, and the West crown could be at stake in this one, or at least the driver's seat in the SEC West is. And we still got a half to go. Brian Kelly is with Jenny. Coach, you said every single play was going to matter in this game. How did that first half play into that narrative? Yeah, I mean, look, both quarterbacks are elusive. Um, you know, both teams can make plays. It's about getting stops, really. Um, you know, we let the back out twice uh, where they made big plays on our defense. Uh, but we come back offensively and make a, you know, obviously a great individual play down at the end. Uh, it's, this is the way it's going to be for four quarters. So, you know, buckle up. We got more work to do. It's a fun <laughs> one, Coach. Thank you. That's exactly it. <laughs> I don't know if that's just for Jenny or for all of us. All of buckle, us. Buckle up. <laughs> Jaden Daniels and Jalen Milrow. What a show in the first half. End of the half. Score 21 21. Now we send you Adam Zucker in our New York studio for the Geico halftime report. Yeah, Ness. We need some seatbelts back here. As the Home Depot SEC on CBS heads into quarter number three in Tuscaloosa at Bryant Denny Stadium. Dead even at 21. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson. Both quarterbacks, we expected a lot out of them. We got a lot out of them. They're both leading their teams in rushing. They've been sensational. But what do you do if you're the defense? Uh... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that question. There you go. Uh, this is like a tennis match. You got to break serve. So, some way, somehow, you got to flip it one time. It might be actually getting two stops could win it. Somebody's going to steal a possession. Remember in the national championship, when Nick Saban did an onside kick against right. Clemson, something like that is going to happen where you steal one more position for their offense. Turnovers have been even. There haven't been any. The quarterback's almost dead even. Kickoff at the goal line. And the quarterback comparison, this is what we were kidding around about a little bit. You can't get much better than this. Oh, look at that. 10 out of 16, both of them 165. Both have over 100 yards rushing. And let's check in with Jenny Depp. Well, guys, let me just say my seatbelt is fastened for the second <laughs> half of this game. Nick Saban reminding his team that it is a 60-minute game defensively. He said we need to contain Jaden Daniels out there. He's scrambling all over us offensively. He said that we need to stick to the game plan, control the line of scrimmage. Guys, he said all 11 guys need to do their job with physicality in this second half. All right, we'll see how it works out. I hope the second half's as good as the first one. Here we go. On first down, it's Diggs. And he digs for about four before the Crimson Tide can bring him down. Keenan made the stop from his nose tackle and position. And that's the first time that LSU ran their version of the triple option with Mason Taylor going into the flat. It was picked up well by Alabama, but there's three phases. The handoff, the quarterback keep, or the pitch is really the throw right. to Taylor in the flat. And that was really good for them a year ago. So in that case, it was the dive to Diggs who picked up four, second down and six. Daniels getting some heat this time. Incomplete intended for neighbors on the far side. Uh, maybe it was Brian Thomas. It was. A little bit of pressure. Keep the push. Be physical. Don't give them any lanes to go into. And that ball could, could have and should have been caught. Perfect yeah. throw. 
Hit him right in the right shoulder pad as he was slipping down. And boy, if Alabama could come out defensively with a three and out for the Tigers to open the third, that would be just what the defensive doctor ordered. Third down and six. Empty backfield again. And the slant's complete. And still going is neighbors and a first down for the Tigers. So once Alabama jumps into their version of the bear front, five man up front, you know it's man to man in the secondary. And Arnold's off by about six, eight yards, and that was easy pitch and catch on third and long. And a pickup of 17 to the 46. Now wide receiver screen. That got great blown effort. up out there by Terry and Arnold. Terry and Arnold, great effort that time. You're going to get those plays, and if you can't handle the blocks by your corners, you're going to get more and more of them. Watch Terry and Arnold blow this play up, run right through neighbors on the play, and get it. Or was it Brian Thomas? It was Brian Thomas. Excuse me. So Terry and Arnold, okay. He was shaken up earlier in the second quarter. Second and ten. Extra man on the rush, trying to contain number five, and they can't do it. Keenan can't get to him. They knock him out of bounds, but he's got a first down. And you're right. You know, you think you got him in the pocket, but it's a defensive tackle type player. Tim Keenan, number 96. Flush him wide, and there's no one there that can handle that speed. So he continues to tack on yardage in big chunks on the ground. That time they brought Chris Braswell inside on a stunt, and he ran right where Braswell left. 148 yards on the ground for Jaden Daniels. First down in Alabama territory at the 43 yard line. Here comes a blitz. Daniels plenty of time loads deep sideline. Oh what a catch by neighbors. But was he in. I think he caught it. Wow. Well I know he caught it. Did he have his foot in. They're going to call him in. Again it's the slot on the wheel. The route. The field is a completed catch. No First he's not going to get. He did. He did. It looked like he was over the white and then he moved it back in on an angle. What a play. First of all. Great coverage by Malachi Moore. Perfect throw and great technique. Somehow he got pigeon toed. I know. I thought for sure he was going to step on. 30 yard pickup. And now inside the 10 yard line goes Josh Williams. Give you an example. There's been a lot of great defensive backs in this game in the past for Alabama and LSU, but none of them, none of them could have stopped that throw. I don't care if it was Matt, Micah Fitzpatrick. Trevion Diggs, that was a perfect throw. You can't stop that. Inside the 10, second down and six. Daniels, quarterback draw. Jaden Daniels heading toward the end zone. Not quite, but he's got a first down at the two. A little different look this time with the quarterback draw. It wasn't empty. Had a blocking back inside. He tries to follow him, but then he feels he can go to his left, and he's not a slider, is he? No, he's not. Deontay Lawson and Caleb Downs brought him down, but not until he got right there for Brian Kelly at first and goal. As you look up above, Jaden Daniels and the LSU offense. Everybody tucked in tight. Now the two tight ends shift to the right. That's the power side. And they're going to cut it the other way. And Josh Williams will walk in. Touchdown, Tigers. Well, the Alabama defensive line did their job. They won their stalemates right here. They held their own. But Williams just bounces off it and then just comes backwards. And Caden Daniel says, nobody going to get him. It's wide open over there. Wow. They came up with a third and long, converted it. Then a perfect throw to neighbors from Daniels. And Josh Williams cleans up. And LSU does what you want to do when you defer. You score the last touchdown of the first half and the first one of the second half. Extra point is up and good. Coming out of the locker room, the Tigers on the road have regained the lead. Nine plays, 75 yards, a little under four minutes. The perfect throw to neighbors. And then Josh Williams cleans it up with his third rushing touchdown of the year. Less than four minutes into the third quarter, LSU has regained the lead. 
A great drive coming out of the halftime locker room. 75 yards for the touchdown. Kendrick Law is going to bring it out from the end zone. And another good return. Well, we talked about where the attack was going to come. It was going to come from the slot. There's the two right there, right on the sideline. Watch, we went back and looked what Malachi Moore's reaction is. He turns around and puts his hands up and goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> he was in? I had perfect coverage on that thing. Malachi, one of the best around as well, so good on good right there. Yeah, good on good with a great throw. That always is the tiebreaker. Yeah. So now it's Jalen Milrose turn again from the 30-yard line. Law in the backfield. Milrow with the pitch fake and got out for about five yards. Our game trends, <laughs> it's trending between Jaden Daniels and Jalen Milrow. Back and forth we go. Those two guys sensational in the first half. Daniels has already lit up the third quarter. And both teams scoring 21 in the first half. First time in series history. And 88 games that that's happened. Second and five. Jace McClellan going to be about a yard and a half shy, maybe two yards shy of the first half. Third down coming up. A little more perspective of that 28 points by LSU. Remember, Bama came into this game defensively, giving up five consecutive games in the SEC where they held their opponents to 21 points or less. 28 points already yep. in this game. And going to be the handoff to Miller. Jan Miller. Tight ropes to sideline. Everybody went one way. Jim Miller came back the other on a kind of an inside handoff, and he got to the edge. And right now, Alabama, they set up for that quarterback sneak again and another different look after it. And LSU uses the sideline. Bama uses the sideline. Jim Miller, who Tommy Reese told us, he's probably got the most juice of any of our running backs. And he had enough juice there to get a first down. At the 49-yard line. Milrow, plenty of time. Deep for Burton. Incomplete. Burton looking for a flag. Double coverage. There was none. Yeah, I'll tell you, that time was a stutter. But under Sam, number 14 that time for LSU, had this one picked off. But he misjudges it by a bit. And the ball sails. He thought he had it all the way, but it just went deeper than he thought. We saw Jermaine Burton be a star against Texas A&M. He's not a factor tonight oh, so far. Surprisingly, right? Yeah. You know he feels against these secondary guys, he can have his way, but so far, nothing. McClellan will empty the Alabama backfield on second and ten. Milrow tried to oh, throw short, and it stuffed God. in his face by... Savion Jones. Watch Savion Jones. He almost breaks down like a basketball player right here. He connects himself. Watch him come in. He sees the quarterback one on one. That's him right there. Watch him come in. Now he'll break down and then he jumps up and blocks the shot. <laughs> I got it. I got you. I got you. I got you. Boom. I'll jump. Perfect timing. Great athlete. And it brings up third down and 10. Yeah. Eight for 10 in the game so far. Alabama has been on third down. Gonna have to get all of this one. Ten yards to go. Maybe it's Jay and Milro to go. Looking for a block. Nye Black just kind of didn't know he was coming, I guess, but Nine. he did it on his own. Nine for 11. Nine for 11 on third down. Take that any day. Gee. I mean, and they cannot get off the field. Obviously, they've had their chances. Long yardage and just picking it up any way they want, whether it's the quarterback run or the pass. They've had their way on third down. 18 more yards on the ground for Jalen Milrow. No spy on the quarterback either. First down at the 33 of the Tigers. Try to get Bond in motion and give it off to Roy Williams this time. Well, they like to run over Tyler Booker, number 52. Let's see how he did going to the left side. There he is right there. That's their manhandler right there. He gets up, and yes, 
Watch him just get his defensive tackle out of the way and allow for a really, really good first down run. Second down and two as the tight end shift from left to right. And Williams again, Rodell Williams. He's got it down around the 15 yard line. So Madhouse, defensive coordinator for LSU, brings a corner cap. Brings actually an eighth man into the secondary, from the secondary in, but still is able to get in there. Great block that time by Jaden Roberts, number 77, the other guard. Both guards coming through with good blocks. So LSU came out of the locker room on a long touchdown drive. Alabama trying to answer here. Back in the red zone. And Roydell Williams will score. Touchdown, Alabama. Sixteen yards for Rodell Williams. And this time it's J.C. Latham that gets the key block. On the end man, a lot of scrimmage. But a great offensive tackle. Watch the job he does. Three different offensive linemen get the key blocks. Get into the secondary. Missed tackle. Could have been there. Could have stopped it. But got there late. Will Reichert in for the point after. So far, no breaking serve. <laughs> Gonna be breaking rackets before it's over. <laughs> Rackers extra point is good. Roydell Williams. The two head coaches will be breaking out Excedrin here pretty soon. <laughs> if they don't. Midway point, third quarter. Alabama answers with a 70-yard touchdown march in nine plays. Roydell Williams did the final 16, and we are even again. What are you gonna do? Here in the third quarter at Bryant Denny Stadium, and we have lit up the scoreboard. Will Reichard with that extra point. Most by a kicker in college football history. Congratulations, Will. You'd like to have that field goal back earlier, but 500 points. We got a chance to spend some time with him yesterday. And couldn't have enjoyed more his stay in Tuscaloosa. He'll really enjoy it if they find a way to win this game tonight. Fair catch at the two to bring it out to the 25-yard line. Invesco brings you tonight's scholar athletes, Josh Williams of LSU and Darian Dalcourt for Alabama. Invesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation to both LSU and Alabama's general scholarship funds. LSU three consecutive touchdown drives. Now the end of the first half and the opening drive of this quarter, which is half gone. And what a game, if you're just joining it, joining us, it has been between Jaden Daniels and Jalen Milrow. Not just those two, but they've been sensational. Malik Neighbors, a motion man for the Tigers, settles in a slot on the right side, and Daniels setting for the throw, but now he'll settle for the run. Oh, and look at that move. And then he gets hammered from behind by Dallas Turner, who's seen enough of this. Yeah, but a, it was enough, but a little late. Again, he just spins out of it, does not have the edge speed rusher to that side. He's able to avoid him, and you're right, Dallas Turner hustling all the way. Comes back and make it, but holds him just short of a first down. Deontay Lawson actually got his feet tangled up and went down on his own more than maybe the move of Daniels, but he certainly helped cause it. Second and one, and I don't know if they got the one as we check in with Jenny. Got some Alabama injury updates. Bama safety Jalen Key went down in that first quarter, grabbing at his left hip and quad area. He will not return to this game. And wide receiver Ja'Cory Brooks, he is out with an upper extremity injury, guys. Well, Jenny, thank you. Ooh, we just got loud in here right at the end of Jenny's report. Third down, less than a yard. They get the yard and then some. And it's Logan Diggs again. And everybody quiets down for a second to catch their breath. So, you know, you got to be talking about Alabama 9 for 11 on third down, but it's not like LSU is doing badly. They just don't have 9 to 11. They're 3 for 5.
Two receivers to each side for Daniels, and now Taylor will come inside, there and they're going to throw to him. One-handed catch. And got it to the 40-yard line. That's the first time the triple option has gone to the pitch phase of it. It's an overhand throw. But again, this could be dive. This could be quarterback keep. Or the third option is get it to Mason. Mason Taylor. Tight end who caught the two-point conversion that ended this one last year in overtime. LSU trying to pull back-to-back -back stunners over Alabama. Daniels again trying to spin away. He got away from Turner. There's going to be a holding call, though. And this run will not count, but he doesn't know that yet. And then he takes a shot from Malachi Moore at the end of the run. That's that wait, great matchup. Will Campbell against Dallas Turner. And because the quarterback was moving, holding. that's what Offense. produced the hole. Right here, here's the matchup. Penalty penalty from the previous spot. Two the great players down. matched up. He's okay, he's okay. And then when Daniels moves, yeah, yeah there's a grab before he gets free. That's a good call. Looks like Braswell might have been held on the other side as well. So that negates the run from Jaden Daniels. These two guys, Will Campbell and Emery Jones, played tackle a year ago as true freshmen. Remember Will Anderson, the first round draft pick of, I guess it was Houston that he went to, he was in this game. Dallas Turner still talks to him on a regular basis after following Will's work ethic here at Alabama, trying to be the same kind of player. Right now, he's trying to get away from that tackle again. And in the meantime, oh, Taylor dropped the ball. So what happens when the quarterback scrambles and you've just been the whole halftime telling we got to keep him in the pocket, the rush kind of slows down. Look at Turner. He's playing the scramble here. And that allows for time to throw it, but a drop ball, a self-inflicted stop right here by LSU. Could be back-to-back, -back, a penalty and a drop ball could get a stop for this Alabama defense. Third down and 17. Not like a Jaden Daniels scramble couldn't get that much. He's looking to throw for it. Spar sideline of Taylor, but well short. Got back to near the original line of scrimmage, and we're going to have to see a punt, I believe. Well, we talked about which team could break a serve, and so far that's one. Now let's see if that Alabama offense can make LSU pay. The first LSU punt of the night. Jay Bramlett, who transferred over last year from Notre Dame, set to kick. Fewest punts in the nation. That's because their offense is so good that they don't have to punt that often. And Kool-Aid McKinstry who mishandled a few and let a few go against Tennessee. Back deep, he's going to call fair catch immediately here and takes it around the 31-32 yard line. The faces of the Tide and the Tigers and a tie game. Just a little less than that here, Zook, 28-28 here. During the break, Malik Neighbors getting worked out over there. I don't know if it's a shoulder or a lower back trying yeah, to twist looks, something out. It's like he's trying to loosen up his back, doesn't it? No row throw. There's Jermaine Burton for the first time. Reverses field and gets about 13 in a first down. It is interesting to watch how Jalen Milrow has earned the trust of the Offensive staff for Alabama. They'll throw on first down any time now. They're not babying him. They're not protecting him He is their quarterback and the whole offense is in every play It's just a different look than the timing offense. They've had here the last few years Rodell Williams straight up the middle and Williams still going and a first down pickup of about 15 for Roydell. We haven't scored talked, their last touchdown. Excuse me, Ness. Last time we haven't talked about Seth McLaughlin, but it must have been the center this time. And yes, McLaughlin gets a good block. And then coming in again, it was Roberts, 77. He must have been double teaming, and then he cleans up on the middle linebacker late. Well, that 16 yarder gets it to the 40 yard line of LSU. This Alabama offensive line is making their presence felt here in the third quarter. C.J. Dupree, the tight end in motion. 
And now it's Jalen Milrow looking for a block from Dupree. Got it inside the 35 where Braden Swanson Swinson brought him down. Well, I'll tell you, Jaden Roberts, number 77, is a mauler. You know, he is doing a great job rotating in there for Del Court at right guard. Watch him maul again on this play. This, oh, he just, man, he is a force between he and Booker. They are very physical. Picked up six, second down and four. No row, throws to the outside, kind of a dangerous throw, but he got it to Bond. Isaiah Bond down to the 16-yard line. Watch Isaiah Bond come back to meet this ball. If he did not, it would have been knocked down. Watch, he sees it slow, and he beats him to the point. Beautiful job of your receiver helping the quarterback on a late throw. Come back and get it. Boy, that is good receiving technique. Back in the red zone now. The throw out in the flat to Bond again. And Isaiah gets and wiggles his way to the 11-yard line. Sam made the stop from his safety spot. You know, what's interesting is we called Harold Perkins early in this game with a sack. And then he had that pass play where he did not cover the back. But very, very quiet night for Harold Perkins. Milro. 200 yards in the air now. Well over 100 on the ground. Second down and five. Alabama can get a first down at the six yard line. And it's Jalen Milrow. Pump fakes. Jalen Milrow. Touchdown Alabama. Again, four for number four. Acceleration. I keep thinking about Jenny's interview where he said, I don't need to practice running. I know how to run. Watch him again put it into gear. Comes out on the triple option play, same one that LSU uses, and this time, bang! Look at that. That's running back speed right there. A little fake, the and shake, then he goes. and then the hammer. He's becoming a huge weapon. Rackard's extra point is good. A minute to go in the third quarter. They're mixing it up a little bit after that extra point. I don't see a flag right now. No, they shoved Will Reichert after the after the kick. The veteran kind of sold it a bit too afterwards. <laughs> when you've been around five years, you can act a little bit. At yes. Times. Kicks after it. The play. Yeah, he did sell it a little bit. Yeah. 35 <laughs> 28. Gary said earlier if somebody breaks serve, it could swing the game. Alabama finally stopped LSU to force their first punt. And after that punt, 68 yards later, this guy's got four rushing touchdowns. He came in with five on the season four tonight to cap off that last touchdown and now Alabama's back in front. Yeah that offensive line is really starting to wear down that front for LSU. I really think they miss Wingo up front don't you. Yep. Well this one's at 35 to 28. How about 2019 LSU yeah. open the scoring Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase. Clyde Edwards Elair had a monster game, scoring four total touchdowns. LSU won. Joe Burrow was carried off the field on his way to a Heisman Trophy and a perfect season and a national title. We got that kind of game going on with that kind of quarterback play going on. Welcome to 2023. A minute to go, third quarter. Jaden Daniels and company from the 25. It's Josh Williams, and Williams goes for about five. I saw a little piece or read a little piece or something about Jaden Daniels talking to Joe Burrow. He actually got a call, and he talked to Jaden Daniels about having that calm swag. Remember Joe Burrow did that? <laughs> nice and calm, but still have the swag. He's got it down pretty well. I'd say so. And we know that Joe has it down. Yeah, oh, he's got it down. Yeah. 
at 50 million a year too by the way <laughs> second down at three Taylor the tight end moves and now we got flags all over the place well could this be the second time a penalty disrupts this offense offense number 69 five yard penalty remains second down again the center, center. he should be the one guy that doesn't do this yep same thing earlier happened to him at the end of the half. They got away with it, but watch him. A bit of a Oops. fuck up. Can't do that. Nope. So that backs it up. Not as bad as the first holding, one. holding penalty. Oh, the first one that he put with the holding penalty, but five yards here, a little different. Let's see if that'll help this Alabama defense get another We're not stop. Get a play no. off before the end of the quarter. We'll see a lot of four fingers in the air right now. We played three, and they've been three dandies. Some great players over the years have been in this rivalry, the 88 version. It's not disappointing us. There's some the Home Depot SEC on CBS. We head to the fourth quarter. Alabama at home. If they control the fourth quarter, they're one step closer to Atlanta and maybe beyond. But they still got the Tigers here, but now it's intercepted. Picked off by Terrion Arnold on a tip ball. It was Dallas Turner that got the tip. He made the play. Back-to-back -back stops. Turner times it, and Terrion Arnold is the recipient of it. Only the fourth interception suffered by Jaden Daniels this year. And what a huge play. We were talking about not having turnovers. Here comes one. Watch it. He reads the quick throw, jumps up, and makes the play. Boom. And Terry on Arnold takes the rip. ricochet, his second interception of the season. And now Alabama in prime condition, a prime spot on the field at the 25-yard line. And this flag might be on Alabama. False start. Offense, number 56. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Jenny talked to Coach Kelly at the end of the uh, third quarter. Coach, you said this is going to be a four-quarter fight. What must happen in the fourth to end up on top? Well, obviously, we got to make a stop sooner or later defensively. Um, and, and, you know, we're battling. You know, offensively, we need this possession to go well. Um, and then we got to come up with a stop. we got to fight, claw, dig, whatever we got to do. Uh, you know, find a way to come up with a stop. Our offense, obviously, had a false start there. You know, we're trying to change some plays. But, again, it, we knew it was going to be a battle. Go to the fourth quarter here, and let's go. we got a chance. Let's uh, find a way to win it. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Well, of course, that possession did not go as planned. That was right before the turnover. That hey. sets Alabama up here offensively with a chance to add to their 35. And I think he sensed right. The holding penalty and the legal procedure penalty really forced two stops. Second down and 14 is a little toss to Kendrick Law. And Law got it to the 20 and had his own lineman land on him at the end of that. I love the way they're using Kendrick Law. A lot of different ways to get the ball to your playmakers, and this time he reads the block to the outside by Jace McClellan, cuts in another positive play. Third and medium. Earlier in the season, we didn't see that from Ken. No, Ball. this has been a growth of the offense. Third down. Nine of 11. <laughs> Third and five. They're in field goal range right now, and up by seven. And LSU would love to hold them to a field goal attempt. Milrow with a blitz cutter. Going to try to run away from it. But there's Perkins. Oh, but it might be a horse collar or a face mask. The one guy that could run him down did. Harold Perkins can run. Was it a horse collar? Face mask. Face. Oh, no. it's, here's a call. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle. Defense number four. The penalty reinforced half a 
distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Well, it indeed is a horse collar. No rope with a stiff arm, and there Perkins grabs right under the name plate. Yep. And drags him down right there. So he had him with his left hand in the front, and then he takes his right hand and says, well, I might as well use my other hand. <laughs> Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, good call, right? Yeah, most definitely. When you get that hand around the back and then you abruptly pull that quick, safety foul, right call, and uh, and good job. As you said, left hand in the front, fine. But now with the right hand there and the abruptness, foul for sure, guys. First and goal at the 10. Jace McClellan, touchdown Alabama. Hand it to this offensive line. That defensive line of LSU is getting handled here in the second half. I think it was Tyler Booker coming on the pin and pull this time from the left side. Jace McClellan just fouls. I think it's 52. I think it's got a pull right here. It comes in. Might be Oates 45. It's both of them. One, two. Wow. How nice is that? Talk about clearing out space. They only had to go 25 yards for the touchdown. Rackard's extra point is good. First, there was an interception. Dallas Turner got his hands on a Jaden Daniels pass attempt. Terry on Arnold with the interception. And Jace McClellan from 10 yards out. Alabama up 42-28. Our IHG Hotels and Resorts game recap. It has been a beauty. A lot of offense from Jalen Daniels and Jalen Milrow. And Alabama now with that extra touchdown. That's what they needed was a turnover to try to spread it out a little bit. Now they got the lead they wanted. So the fear for LSU was whether this beleaguered defense all year, which has been the weak point, could hold up. When you put penalties on top of it, right. it looks like they've cracked right now. The only answer for LSU is put a touchdown on the board and try to get that one stop that Brian Kelly was talking about to Jenny at the end of the third quarter. Rockets kickoff, late fair catch taken at the goal line, so out to the 25-yard line. And while they bring out the offense, we've got time to test your knowledge with tonight's Aflac trivia question, which was, who are the last two college starting quarterbacks with back-to-back -back wins over Nick Saban? Jaden Daniels trying to do that tonight. Some of the teams that have defeated Nick Saban back to back over his illustrious career. Well, that's a big hint. Well, that's a lot of hint, I think. There, yes. To narrow it down. 13 minutes left in regulation. Jaden Daniels going deep. And neighbors and Malachi Moore get tangled up. No flags. Incomplete. And it's going to be roughing the passer, though. Jaden Daniels down on yep. a flag yep. as well. Watch as he lets the ball Personal go. Personal foul. Right. Roughing the passer. Oh, Defense, helmet right under the 15. chin. Contact to the hand area. and he drove him into the ground. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. He did about down. everything wrong there. Yes. Oh, man. That's where you gashed the chin right there. So Jaden Daniels still face down on that Dallas Turner hit. And that means that warming up will be Garrett Nussmeyer. And boy, I hope Jaden Daniels is okay. That's for yeah. sure. And you wonder if it's going to approach targeting here. A crown of the helmet to the face of the quarterback. I wonder if that will be reviewed. Take a look at this one in regular speed. And there's no slowing on number 15. And as Gary said, under the chin, maybe with the helmet, and then driving him in. You can't do any of those things. Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, what do you think? I think you're talking about what Gary alluded to. And look, the quarterback in that position is defenseless by definition. So forcible contact initiated to the head and neck area could potentially lead to targeting. It's the indicator. Now, he doesn't lower the head. But the initiated contact, to me, is right to that head and neck area. Uh, that's what I think they would be looking at. And I wouldn't be surprised if they review this, fellas, for sure. 
looked like Jaden just said I'm okay, but I don't think he feels that no, okay right no. now. I can only imagine that Devin White is out there going, I vote that as targeting since yeah. I got called for <laughs> one a little less than that. So enter Garrett Nussmeyer, and we'll see if Jaden Daniels can come back. Again, Dallas Turner, who's been chasing number five all night long. And yeah, he built, he beat Will Campbell inside that time. Been pretty much a good matchup all game, but that time Dallas Turner won, and then Jaden Daniels lost. Let's see, this is going to move the ball out to the 40 yard line with the penalty. And they continue to have a look at their star quarterback on the sideline who's in the hunt for or in the discussion at least for the Heisman Trophy. They're, they're checking the jaw right yeah. there, right? You easily could have a broken jaw. They are not re well if they reviewed it, they didn't stop the game to review it. Nope. So now backup quarterback in. We saw this in the SEC championship last year. It's not that Garrett Nussmeyer is not a capable player, but now he's in a two touchdown hole with 13 minutes to go. Nussmeyer sidearms it out complete to Thomas. Terry on Arnold made the tackle. Arnold with the interception earlier that has Jayden, given Alabama this lead. Jaden Daniels back in the game. You know you like your backup quarterback when you let him go in there cold off the bench and let him throw. Yeah, that's right. He picked up five on that throw. And a tough son of a gun. Jaden Daniels right back in there after making sure his jaw worked. Flags down. Emory Jones got the early kick move. They've been target. given a lot of leeway. Offense, number 50. To these tackles. Remain second down. But on this one, for Emory Jones, he's not going to get the benefit of the doubt because the linesman was standing right next to Nick Saban when he moved early. So it goes back to second and ten. Third straight possession of penalty for LSU on offense. They could not overcome the last two. And the clock's running down. They're going to have to take a very valuable timeout now. Time With just under 12 minutes LSU. to go in the ball game. Alabama up a couple of scores. Question last two college starting quarterbacks to win back to back over Nick Saban. We gave you some teams to help you guess. Rex Grossman, Florida, and Drew Brees from old Purdue, Purdue. Anytime you can get Drew Brees and Rex Grossman into an answer, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting them in, right? Uh, I know we did at least one of those Drew Brees know, ones. For sure. <laughs> so Nussmeyer is back in at quarterback. So the one play that Jaden Daniels was back in apparently had some second thoughts maybe about whether or not his jaw or whatever is okay. Nuss Meyer flares it out and that's dropped. Yeah, Diggs well, couldn't hold it. Wasn't going to go anywhere though that time that Alabama zone defense was ready for the flare and that was going nowhere. Again if you missed it a couple of minutes ago this was a hit Dallas Turner on Jaden Daniels. Man. Gene Steratore talked to us during the break and felt that that at least should have been reviewed as a possible targeting and Jaden now you can see the number five in the injury tent right now. Meanwhile his understudy Garrett Nussmeyer faces a third down and ten. So but it's not going to come right here. No, Alabama was misaligned that time and they took a Alabama. timeout. It is their first. So Alabama takes its first time out each with two remaining. With 11.54 to go in a vital game in the SEC West. Look at our Ford game changers. These guys change every game, Gary. Yeah, why not? I mean, when they got the ball in their hands, they're attacking any way they want to almost. Pass, run, and, and these guys get in the open field. I'll tell you, Jaden Daniels and he's elusive. But this guy, Milro, is fast. I mean, he's super fast when he gets in space. Watch this one. Boom! Downhill. The last piece of the puzzle for Jaden Milro, getting him involved in the running game. And I think getting him involved 
has been a big part of the success of this offense. Third down and 10 for Garrett Nussmeyer in relief of Jaden Daniels who's out with an injury and he throws high and incomplete intended for neighbors in the double coverage and it's fourth down. Well Garrett Nussmeyer has a gun and he believes he has a gun because he tried to fit that one into no room and it looks like LSU is looking up at the clock down 14 as you look at the comparison between the two quarterbacks it looks like LSU is deciding with our back real quarterback on in the 10th we still got to go for this wow well maybe no choice and according to Brian Kelly but here could be the ball game from the 40 yard line for the Tigers flags all over the place snap never got to Nussmeyer and he's just said punt I think it's going to be the center again. Offense. that's three yep. five yard penalty remains fourth down and it might be actually a good break for LSU you know I mean uh, the rush was coming it demanded a punt it seems like and that one was all messed up everybody's me I double, double clutch. clutch that's again. three of them three double clutches that's that's three too many you said it <laughs> so Brian went three straight stops by this defense for Alabama all with penalties involved for LSU and fair catch called for and taken by Kool-Aid McKinstry back at the 25 yard line Dallas Turner made some mistakes Isaiah Bond made some big plays so did Jace McClellan Alabama 42 28 I look through the ring of Bryant Denny Stadium 42 28 and Jaden Daniels the star quarterback of LSU on this hit by Dallas Turner has Gone to the tent. Jenny's got more. Yeah, Daniels has been inside the tent for over six minutes now. Guys, I'm told it is concussion protocol. He's going to be out for the game, and his mom just joined him inside the tent. Oh, boy. Well, it's a sensational game that he played. Too bad it couldn't go all the way to the end of the fourth quarter because I'm sure he had more magic left in him. But that's the night for him. Meanwhile, the other star quarterback, Jalen Milrow, with four touchdowns on the Knights and his offense with a two touchdown lead. Yeah, right now that Bama offensive line, they've already in the second half rushed for 114 yards. They'd like to take five minutes off. Yeah. Even if it's a field goal, that could be the difference in the game. Alabama scored touchdowns on its last three drives. All in this half. And they're taking their time now, too, with the play clock pick up a four for Roydell Williams second down at six look at the evenness oh that's a game. bad snap and somehow he got a hold of it and now that might be dangerous for LSU's defense although they do bring Milrow down after a short game so I think they're down I think Seth McLaughlin instead of double clutching just clutched and he just sent it when nobody else was ready the center snapped it he was the only one moving on the play very fortunate that Milrow was able to react and get this ball. That could have been a changing play for LSU. It's one of the best receptions of the night Absolutely. by the quarterback. And he also picked up yardage on the play. Yep. Made it a manageable third down. Third down and three. Milrow, quick slant. Got it to Burton. First down. So watch. This is the timing. This is the timing that we've seen in this Alabama offense for the past few years with Bryce Young to uh, Mac Jones. Look at this one. That is the old slant play we've seen so many of. And this time Milrow puts it right on the face mask. Perfect. Uh, first down at the 10 minute mark. Blitz coming off the edge. Milrow's going to run that way. Ooh. And he got nailed after a short game by Major Burns. Burns has been in on a lot of tackles tonight. 
I don't know if that's good news, though. If you're an LSU defense. No, you'd rather have some of the front guys. Are the linebackers right? <laughs> There's what I was just talking about in the second half. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And one came on a short field after the Terry on Arnold interception. Bond, the motion man to Gibbs to McClellan. Got away from the first guy. And picked up about three. Yeah, Jordan Jefferson, number 99. He's the guy that replaced Akai Wingo in this game. Couldn't quite corral him. And Burns is the guy that's down. Burns was in on the stop. Transferred from Georgia. And shaken up on that last hit. When we Major Burns being helped off holding the back of his neck. He's already got a horse collar a roll around his right. shoulder pads there. And I think you're right, Gary. I think it was the, maybe the tackle before. We were talking about it in the break that the tackle before when he popped up with that, he did go helmet to helmet on that previous tackle. And I wonder if it's just more of it. Here's the play before. Watch him dip down and collide his. Yeah, he got stung right there. Yep. Okay, he, he stayed stays. in for another play and made another tackle, but yeah. not feeling so good after that hit. It's going to be a corner blitz from the top right here. Third down and five. Milrow switches McClellan from one side to the other. Looks like a little confusion for Alabama's offense. Now they're set. Oh, safety blitz instead. Milrow's going to take off. Jalen Milrow's got the first down, spins his way. Got another great looking run. Oh, 11 for 13. They bring the blitz. It's not the corner blitz, it's the safety blitz to the boundary. Milrow sees it, knows it's coming, knows he has had no chance on the hot route, so he just runs it up the middle for the first down. His IQ of playing this position is just getting better and week you, in. And you got to give all credit to that coaching staff. They brought him along. I thought the coolest part of Jalen Milrow was that. South Florida game when he was benched and he stayed with the team. Right. He congratulated every quarterback every time they came to the sideline. He won his team over that day. And then he just kept improving week in and week out. Yes. As out of bounds goes McClellan. Don't forget before we're done, we'll have the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Might be a sub that's got some crimson in it the way this thing's going with seven and a half minutes to go. Second down and six. Alabama trying to go to eight and one and six and zero oh in the SEC. LSU trying to find a way to stop their offense and give them at least a chance to work their way back in it here in the fourth quarter. McClellan got a first down. Perkins made the tackle. Jenny. We all fell in love with Jalen Milrow's laugh after Alabama beat Tennessee, but his mom, she's loved it from day one. From the first giggle, she said that his laugh was infectious. Guys, Jalen told me that that moment post game was just so funny. The mere thought of Coach Saban chewing on a cigar was one of the funniest moments that he's experienced. It's a moment he said he'll have forever, and it's a laugh that I know I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, he cracked us all up that night after Jenny presented Coach Saban with a a cigar that he would chew on, but yeah. not light. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be one of those nights where you think about chewing on one, two if you win it, because right. well, this, you're heading into the home stretch with a chance to win the West. And this nine play drive with two key third downs, one the slant pass and one with Jalen Milrow on the scramble up the middle. That took off the clock. They're going to take close to seven, eight minutes off the clock with this drive. Exactly what you want your offense to do in this type of game situation. And LSU only two timeouts and playing with their number two quarterback. Not the recipe against Alabama here at Bryant Denny. Cordell Williams, I don't know how he made a few yards out of that. Looked like he was going to be stopped for a loss and still picked up about four. Here's what I was talking about. You go to eight and one and six and zero, oh, and you've already beaten Ole Miss. That stretches things out for you a little bit. Yeah, they'd have to lose both remaining games. 
And if you didn't see earlier the second game of our triple header on CBS today, Georgia survived at home against Missouri. So they're on top of the East. Alabama right now on top of the West. And as you think on that road to Atlanta right. that Adam and BJ and Rick always talking about, we might have a collision again between these two powerhouses. We'll see. Got a ways to go and a few games to play yet. One more thought about, you know, they'd have to lose both. It's at Kentucky and then Auburn. Both of them away. And this would drop LSU to six and three. You know that no two lost teams ever won the college football playoff. Every offense nest loves to run the ball effectively when they have to. Yep. And this is what Alabama's doing. And whistle before the play. Pretty sure LSU only had 10 men out there. That's not enough the way these offenses no, are. No, Ness, I was wrong. They had nine. That's even worse. A fourth down coming up. Fourth and one. They might just be trying to draw them off sides and they're going to kick a field goal. This is the 12th play of the drive if they snap it here. And this drive started, Gary mentioned this, with 11.41 on the clock. So they've used seven minutes, and now they will walk to the sideline. It makes it a 17-point game, a three-score game. You got a great field goal kicker. I think the good choice by Nick Saban. They already burned a timeout by faking they were going to go for it, and then they end up getting a, taking a timeout. I think that's the right call. So as Riker comes out to attempt the field goal, Jaden Daniels, who's out, injured right now, but what a show he put on for us, including the opening touchdown to Neighbors. He ran all over the field. He's under concussion protocol right now in the tents, but, you know, Heisman Trophy-type performance before that hit by Dallas Turner unfortunately took him out of the game and took him away from us because we have so enjoyed what he has done tonight and last year as well. Some of the games we did with him, he's just out of sight as a player. And those are the numbers he had. Four total touchdowns. Led the team in rushing. So this is a 43-yard Will Reichard field goal attempt. Oh, and missed again. Missed again to the right. Same kick. And he is disappointed in himself. So those are the first two field goals he's missed this year. And he just gets a pat on the rear end from Coach Saban on the way by. That just hang out there that much too far. Well, that means the game's not over. Nope. You know you're a good kicker when Nick Saban pats you on the back. Yeah. Missed with two of them. So it's back in the hands of Garrett Nussmeyer with four and a half to go and only one time out. Nussmeyer steps up, throws on the run, throws a strike to Neighbors at a first down LSU. Nussmeyer came in in relief of Daniels when he was injured in the SEC championship game and put up big numbers. But uh, time is of the essence right here for LSU. Garrett throws quick to neighbors again into Alabama territory. And we're under four minutes. He's going, come on, guys, we've got to hurry. The Alabama 43 yard line, second down at five. Throw to the outside. This one's complete to Lacey. And he's thrown out of bounds. When I spoke with men, Mark, Mike Denbrock, the offensive coordinator, about Garrett Nussmar, he goes, We would just put him back in the top pocket and let it fling. And that's what he's going to do. Just fling it. And it's the only recipe they've got right now. Down by 14. Got to keep throwing. Nussmeyer, high, but tipped away. Incomplete. Neighbors, the intended receiver, and Terrion Arnold again with a hand in there. He had the key interception earlier, remember? Yeah, 
Neighbors could not come back to the ball because he had to jump for it. Remember early in the game when Isaiah Bond came back and caught that one? A little lower throw and he would be able to step into it. Alabama fans want to celebrate in three more minutes. They hold out of this two score lead. That's Meyer. Off his back foot, short game across the middle to neighbors. Time permitting, Adam, Rick, and BJ will have all the day's best highlights on the U.S. Army postgame show. Those guys have had a long day, as has Gene Steratur. And we appreciate your work, fellas, all of you. At least they got good games to watch. They huh? did. <laughs> Third down and eight. Two down territory, obviously. Safety blitz coming. Nussmeyer fires long. Nobody home out there to hit the pylon or close to it. Mason Taylor that time pulled up. He judged the coverage, knew he couldn't get back there and stopped, hoping for a stop route from Nussmeyer. Taylor's going to come on the wheel, but he knows he's got nothing there, so he says, I'm going to stop. Now remember, Nussmeyer and Taylor don't work together as much right. as Jaden Daniels. Maybe it would have been read better. Here's the game. Fourth down and eight. And the crowd, knowing what Gary just said, just erupted. Nussmeyer pressured, throws, caught by neighbors. I think he nope, he bobbled it. it. Yep. And that could be it. Ball well thrown. Neighbors takes his helmet off because he thought he should have had it, and he should have. And how about this Alabama defense? For two big games in a row, they we were here, Tennessee in this one. Yep. They shut them out in the second half. Never would have thought that, either game. Not with those two offenses. So neighbors who came in with big numbers and had another very good day, now having a sad time on the sideline because it's probably the last time he's going to be able to touch it. Yeah, my fault. LSU did score in the third quarter. I was just reminded. A shutout. Chase McClellan. <laughs> nice run. Next Saturday, SEC on CBS. Back at our usual 8:30 Eastern time slot. One of these matchups for you. All starts with a drive to Atlanta and State Park College football today. That's next Saturday on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. So Nick Saban said our defense needs to play disciplined. It was a lack of discipline from the LSU's offense that got him in trouble. Just a run into the middle of the pile trying to drive for that first down and they get it. And that will just about do it. Should be time to go victory formation. Boy, it's sad to see number five and sitting in that spot. Sure is. What a great performer, great game today before being injured. And again, it's concussion protocol according to what they told Jenny as he took it right in the chin on that hit by Dallas Turner. And that was the last opportunity really for the LSU offense to get in the kind of gear that he can put them in. Well, after that early touchdown by neighbors, we wondered the message to this Alabama offense could the other part of their team stand up to a high-scoring game? They sure did. Well, the people have been looking for points from this Alabama offense. They're going to be happy with 42 tonight, I can tell you that. Came in averaging 31 a game, just under 31 a game. And we're looking for more from number four. <laughs> they got a whole load of it tonight. David Milrow takes a final snap to me. Alabama goes to eight and one and six and zero. Oh. Jaden Daniels out of the tent, so Alabama gets a little payback from last year in Baton Rouge as they win on their home field. 
And the finals 42 to 28. So the 88th edition of this rivalry was really a classic until the final half and a great drive by Alabama even though they missed a field goal to burn up clock and that took care basically of the fourth quarter. Yeah that first stop of the second half was the key and the two quarterbacks both came through when they were in there didn't they. One's got the game ball in hand and one's got a towel over his head and Nick Saban's got another win over LSU Jenny. Coach, you said that great competitors rise to the occasion. How did you rise to the occasion tonight and stay atop the SEC West? You know, the players did a great job in the second half. Offense did a great job of controlling the ball, kept the ball away from them. We got a couple big stops on defense when we needed it to get up two scores. So that kind of changed the game for us. But man, I'm proud of the way our guys competed in the game because it was it was a tough gut check, you know, when they scored right before the half, but they bounced back right in the second half. You said that the greatest birthday gift would be a solid team performance over 500 yards of offense out there. Is that good enough for you coach. Yeah I'm good. It's happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday coach. All right Jalen. You said there was a hunger within the building. You said there was a hunger within the building this week. How did you play with that hunger out there. Number one thing it was coach's birthday earlier this week. So that was his birthday gift right there. But uh, no, the, the message in the locker room was just one play at a time. I constantly wanted to build and grow as we approached the field. And now the team collected win, and I'm proud of the guys. Great birthday, Greg. Congratulations Definitely. out there. Roll Tide! <laughs> There's the smile and the laughter from Jalen Milrow one more time. And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Jalen Milrow, you would think would be involved, wouldn't you? I would say so. On this, to give Alabama the lead that they would not relinquish with his touchdown run. Eli Gold called it like this for Alabama Radio. Here now, Milrow fakes the throw, rolls to his right, and his fourth touchdown of the day. A 10 yard run for Jalen Milrow, his fourth touchdown of the evening. And the Crimson Tide has now taken a lead of 34 to 28. So that was four for four, and then high fives with the fans in the end zone. And he's still having a good time, and why not? His team is on top of the heap in the SEC West, a perfect 6 and 0, 8 and 1 overall. Ole Miss. A game back, but they've already lost to Alabama. LSU falls to four and two. That's going to wrap it up for us. Our final trip to Tuscaloosa was a dandy. We've enjoyed every trip here. None more enjoyable than this one tonight. For Gary Danielson, Jenny Dell, Gene Steratore, our entire CBS crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Tuscaloosa. Final score, tied 42, Tigers 28. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. Good night from Tuscaloosa.